Welcome back everybody to another episode of Will It Pyrolicize. Now today we're doing something very special. Some of the first ever biomass we've ever done in here. I know we've done coffee before, but today we got grass clippings here. Now I said lawn waste because it really isn't 99% pure grass clippings. So there's some other things mixed in there inevitably. But I sure hope that you don't mind because I don't care. So anyways, I cleaned out this reactor of everything pretty much, and there's just some carbon left over. We're going to go ahead and load this grass in. Uh, I'll fill it up probably about halfway just because, you know, we have the issue with microwave penetration with this reactor design. So I don't want to fill it up all the way. It'll kind of pretty much be a waste to do that. So I fill it up about halfway, as you see. I wanted to let you guys know uh, as I'm filling this up. Uh, que alguien que haga locaciones en español de mis videos, si o no. So, anyways, uh, filling this up, this grass is super lightweight, super lightweight stuff, right? Um, and I theorize, let's speculate what we think is going to happen here. I hypothesize if we pyrolysize grass clippings, we will get quite a bit of gas we get some water quite a bit of water we might get a little bit of tar maybe some type of oil you know I'd say probably tar that's what I speculate what do you guys think comment below let me know so to everybody new to the system let me break it down so microwaves are formed here from this magnetron and they shoot down into the chamber and heat up what's down there which forms a gas and that gas or vapor will come up and it'll hit this condenser, which is full of steel wool, which will cause any condensate to fall down, which can then be collected in this jar down here. After that, it'll go up and it'll hit another steel wool condenser, and that'll cause anything to fall down again. It'll go into this water bubbler, and then it'll come out this other dryer filter with kitty litter and go into this yoga ball to be collected as clean gas. So with that being said, enough talk. Let's go get this thing running actually wait a major part of pyrolysis is no oxygen and how do we do that as you see here this is a propane tank and this propane tank has syngas in it or the gas from previous reactions in it so what I do is I turn this on and this will push out any oxygen in the chamber and a good way to test that all the oxygen is out is if I can actually light this gas coming out the other end because it is flammable right so as you see here it lights and that means that all the oxygen at this point is out of the chamber and we are good to go ahead and go. Now I have this electric meter to show me how many kilowatt hours this will consume. We're going to run it for about 8 hours and yeah. So this is my, my uh, EMF reader so I know that the magnetron is on. And that without having to touch anything, you know, electronics can be dangerous. So after about five minutes, as you can see, we have no vapor formation. Now, this is kind of an issue because with microwaves, they heat up things extra quickly. And normally, we see vapor formation in literally the first 20 seconds. So about 12 minutes in, I look back, still no vapor formation. And you guys really can't see it on camera, but the magnetron was starting to smoke because the microwaves are being reflected back to it because nothing was really absorbing them that well. So at this point, I was like, well, this is a waste of time, a waste of energy. So I'm going to go ahead and just turn this thing off completely. And we're going we're gonna to retry this, and I'm going to add some catalysts. So when I started to unscrew the lid, you can see this vapor formed here. And this vapor is flammable, this grass gas, you could say. It's flammable and it's calorific, so that was really exciting to see. And of course, it showed up after I started to unscrew everything. So that does mean some of the grass was starting to break down. You can see quite a bit of vapor coming out here. So I have my respirator on just because, we, you know, we don't really want to breathe anything in. We don't know what it is. So now I'm going to add a catalyst, okay? Now, the grass was absorbing some of the microwaves on its own, but a catalyst basically just boosts that process. This is carbon from previous reactions, so this is pretty much just carbon. And you see I'm mixing it in here, and what this carbon does is this absorbs microwaves rapidly. It can get up to over a thousand degrees Fahrenheit or over 600 centigrade really quickly, right? 
and this is also a clay and lime catalyst I'm adding here and this catalyst pretty much aids in the formation of vapors it also is catalytic in the sense that it will react with any acidic properties um, and it will absorb some potential pollutants as well so now I get this lid back on screw it back down you know how we do and I just want you guys to pay attention to how much quicker these vapors form when I turn this reactor back on because there's some things that don't need a catalyst but I think that when you do microwave pyrolysis you should add a catalyst to everything okay so you see I just turned this thing back on we got the microwaves forming um, and as you can see already we pretty much have vapors forming literally just seconds after starting it flammable so it's a complete difference right it's just a lot more energy efficient to use this because you know even though the grass was absorbing it on its own you know it, it, it just wasn't that good so now you can see here after about an hour 40 minutes the yoga ball is completely full of the grass gas right um, it's pretty clean stuff too you can see the production of how much is coming out there and this yoga ball is completely full at this point so I need to hook up another one but let me show you guys you know to confirm this is real grass gas you know as you see when I go to turn this valve it starts shooting out at a rapid rate and that goes to show this is pretty much natural gas if you ask me this probably is mostly composed of methane okay and in terms of oils as you see we did get some and it's very interesting to me because it's like it's a really rich brown color I'm like what is that you know because I, I was thinking just water, right? But that actually had some color to it. It had a little bit of viscosity. It looked like an oil. So we're going to discover that later. Um, now, about 7 hours 30 in, 30 minutes. I wanted to check to see if we had much any more oil. And really, we did not have that much more oil. Once again, did have that brown color to it. Very interesting. Not even that much water to come out of this thing either. Which was also very interesting because, you know... Even though the grass was dry, there's always water content and everything. It's hard to get 100% of the water out, you know, desiccate something that much. You can see, after about 7 hours in, the vapor production slowed down a lot. Uh, that's just how it is. That's usually how I judge how done pyrolysis is, right, by the vapor formation. So you can see, even though there are some vapors forming, they can't even hold a flame anymore, right? So to me, that's a good sign that, you know... This is almost done. I give it about 30 more minutes, and you see 751, 7 hours, 51 minutes, 10 kilowatt hours, so about $1.20 of electricity to run this thing. Actually, I'd probably go about $1.30, just, you know, add a little bit of taxes in there and all. But, you know, anyway, I take this lid off, and let's take a look at how this looks in here. Look at that. Muy bonita. Look at that carbon right there. Just look at how even it is. And and like I could even hear it when it would like hit the ground. You know that, that sound of carbon when it hits the ground? It's almost like metallic. That was beautiful to hear. And like you can see that the carbon retained the shape of the grass. Like it's in little shards and flakes just like what the grass was in. So as you can see, I mean... We pyrolysized the hell out of this grass, you know, it's just carbon now, and I mean, goodness gracious, the microwaves penetrated it really well, and that was because, in my theory, you know, the grass is, first of all, really light, it's not dense, and it has a lot of, you know, air pockets in it, and so microwaves can get down in there and, and do their thing, so this is what it pretty much looked like. I would say over 90% of the grass pretty much pyrolysized. There was some leftovers that were not completely done. Like they were just on the verge of being completely carbonized. But you can see it turned out really nice, really nice powder. Great stuff. So let's take a look at this oil now. Because it's really interesting to me. Like what is this? How does it work? Will it light? <laughs> you know, can we make gasoline out of grass? Like that would be crazy, right? So I go ahead, I put this oil on my uh, lid here, and the first thing that stood out is that it did kind of form a clump, like, kind of like if you put water on oil, you know, this lid does have tons of oil on it, so I went to go light it, and yeah, nothing happens, because this is probably like over 90% water in this oil right here, 
or I'm calling it an oil, it really is just water with a color to it. And that color could have come from just the pipes in the reactor having carbon in them or oils in them residually, right? Because I didn't clean them out. So this literally could just be water and nothing else except for other things that kind of picked up with it when it came out. But, you know, not really surprised to see that. I did expect more gas than anything else. And you see, we did get quite a bit. We got about two yoga balls full of gas. Uh, it, you know, that's a decent amount. If I had plastic in there, I'd get probably like four yoga balls total full of gas. But you can see this stuff is flammable. And, um, you know, it's some good stuff. It's a real fuel. Like, you can really use this on the stove. And it's kind of crazy when I say that out loud, right? Like, we just turned gas... Or we just turn grass into something you can use on your stove. And this is actually a lot more efficient of a way to cook than if you were to just take those grass clippings and throw them in a the fire. They burn out so much quicker than, than if you were to turn them into this gas. And then, you, you know, now you have a couple hours, maybe not a couple hours, but, you know, at least probably an hour of cooking right here, right? So that's good stuff. So will grass pyrolysize? Yes, it will. You guys take care. We're doing food waste next. And comment below what you want to see after that. Peace out, guys.